First, though, the Trump administration's $4.1 trillion budget request for fiscal 2018 calls for a reduction to the spending growth of several programs. The plan is expected to face a markup on Capitol Hill. Democrats, for one, say that the plan deprives the nation's poor of key services. OMB Director Mick Mulvaney disputes that. We are not kicking anybody off of any program who really needs it. We don't have enough money to take care of people, everybody who doesn't need help. Joining us now is former U.S. Treasury Secretary under President Clinton and former Director of the National Economic Council under President Obama, Larry Summers. Secretary, good to see you. Good to see you, Maria. Thanks so much for joining us. So I've read a fair amount of what you've been saying about the President's budget. You simply call this ludicrous. Why? It's the least honest and competent budget that's been put out in 40 years. Look, there are, there are value judgments about the poor. I don't agree with those value judgments, but they were elected and they have a right to make their value judgments. There are optimistic economic forecasts. They're further away from the professional consensus than any administration in more than a generation. That doesn't seem like the best bet but they're entitled to their opinion. But they're not entitled to violate the laws of arithmetic and logic. And that's what this budget does. Let me explain. Yeah, let's go through it. They have a tax cut. They think their tax cut will spur the economy a great deal and that will generate extra revenue. I don't think they're right, but that's their assumption. Fair enough. That's why they project a big acceleration in growth. And that's now part of their baseline. That's right. So based on their tax cut, they have a very optimistic baseline. Fair enough. They don't get to then say that their tax cut pays for itself because of the extra growth that it generates, since that growth they already took account of in for that. the baseline. To do that would be a double counting. Right. Or alternatively, if, they, if you want to take account of the benefits of your investment through tax cutting, you also have to take account of the costs of your tax cutting. And they didn't do that uh, in the budget. So it's just double counting. It violates the laws of arithmetic. Now, I suppose they could say that they're going to raise tax, that they're not going to take account of any growth, and that they're going to raise taxes one dollar for every dollar they cut taxes but if you listen to everything that donald trump has said for the last fifteen months everything that secretary mnuchin has said since he took office that is not what they have said mm. they have said that they're gonna cut taxes and that's gonna be what's going to uh... grow the uh, grow the economy so this is a step out of arithmetic and uh, and logic and that's a different thing at least for me than um, empirical assumptions and value judgments or judgments about data that aren't judgments uh, that that I would sh that I would share this is an extraordinary and uh, I have to say uh, dishonest uh, thing. Let me let me let me drill down a couple of the points that you sure. make. Uh, the three percent growth projections that they have. First of all, they have a projection of two and a half percent for 2018, and they're not looking at three percent for a couple of years out. But they are expecting three percent to actually pay for this, as you say. What would the impact of a sharply lower corporate tax be? I mean, do you think that dictates behavior? If you've got a corporation that currently is paying 35 percent and will ultimately pay 25 percent, 20 percent, we know where the president is at 15 percent, which very few people expect that to materialize, but at 20 percent or 25 percent, won't that dictate behavior in terms of investing more in the business, hiring more people? Wouldn't lower taxes for an individual dictate their behavior in terms of spending more and generating that growth that they're looking for? There's two things that are important to recognize. One is we've already got an economy with a 4.4% unemployment rate. So the scope to get more growth just by generating more demand is not what it was a few years ago. Well, you're talking about the uh, jobs number versus the growth. Well, no, but, if the, GDP but in order to produce of seven sure, tenths of a percent. Sure, Maria. But in order to produce more GDP, you're likely to need more people working. And we're kind of there. 
in terms of most of the way there uh, in terms of in terms of employment. Three percent seems like a kind of normal number. The thing is that for many years we had a population of adults that was growing at one percent plus a year and we had a big trend towards more women working. That's over. Both of those things are over. The women are working already and the adult population is now growing very, very slowly. So even if we went back to good productivity performance, we actually wouldn't have 3% uh, growth over, uh, over, the long, over the long term. But you ask about the incentive effects of corporate tax right. cuts. And on balance, I think we should find a variety of reforms, particularly with respect to repatriation. But here's some things your viewers uh, should think about. One, costs of capital are now close to zero. Interest rates have never been lower. Right. Corporations are sitting with huge quantities of cash in treasury bills paying nothing. So if they had attractive investment projects, even with today's tax rate, they would take them. How now you, like many other people, quote the 35% corporate tax rate, but that's the statutory rate. That doesn't take account of accelerated depreciation. It doesn't take account of a lot of loopholes. So the if you look at the rate actual rate, rates yeah, between 15 and 20, uh, is actually between 15 and 20 percent. And by the way, the actual rate is pretty much at the average of the industrial countries. It's above the Cayman Islands. But if you look at Germany's and Japan's and France's and England, the people we compete with, they've got about the same average rate. So you so don't think the corporate you, tax cut's going to do anything because you have to It's going to be in the basis. In the it's going to be more like 10 basis points than it's going to be like, uh, than it's, than it's going to be like one percentage point. But look, if they want to make that assumption and make it explicit in their budget, that's fine. But they don't get to count the growth benefit, which is in their budget, and not count the fact that the corporations are not paying taxes in calculating the deficit. That I understand. That, that is, is dishonest. Look.